Support for NPR and the following message come from the Wallace Foundation, fostering improvements in learning and enrichment for disadvantaged children and the vitality of the arts for everyone. Ideas at wallacefoundation.org. Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Winter Sleeping Arrangements <laughs> Department here at Car Talk Plaza. <laughs> you may recall that last week I read some very positive quotes in honor of women. Oh, you know I'm, I'm sure you were hoping to get back into the house before the chill of winter. Well, I think you in, should huh? start building a little pallet there on the garage floor <laughs> for me. Because here's one called, To Women Everywhere from a Man Who's Had Enough. Oh, <laughs> you, just, you just can't help yourself, no, can you? No, I can't. <laughs> All right. Allow me, allow me to officially <laughs> distance myself. <laughs> well, I, I would How like do to... I, what do I, can I move way over here? How's Wait, that? Wait a minute. Can you still hear me? <laughs> I can't even see. <laughs> Here, well, number one. To women everywhere from a man who's had enough. Learn to work the toilet seat. If it's up, you put it down. We need it up. You need it down. You don't hear us complaining about you leaving it down. <laughs> Men see in only 16 colors. Peach is a fruit, not a color. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you're fat, you probably are. Don't ask us. We refuse to answer. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Read you, some of the good ones. <laughs> if you ask a question you don't want an answer to, expect an answer that you ain't going to like. <laughs> if something we said can be interpreted two ways, and one of the ways makes you sad or angry, we meant the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Here's, here's the last one. Do you have a guy, like, on permanent retainer? <laughs> an attorney? Do you, he, I do, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> a headache that lasts 17 months is a problem. See a doctor. <laughs> but I like the first one. Learn to work the toilet seat. If it's not put it down. <laughs> I like it. Look, if you'd like to call us and change the subject to cars, please call. <laughs> Our number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888 888- Two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Kimberly from Bethany, West Virginia. Hi, Kimberly. Do you have a problem with this seat down up business? Well, of course, but it has something to do with the approach. You know, we're kind of approaching backwards, whereas you guys approach forward, so you can kind of see when the seat is up or down. Well, don't you have lights down there in West Virginia? Where you, yeah, we're going by field. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, guess so. Huh? Yeah, but it's it's kind of a shock when you go in at night. You know, you don't want to turn on the light all the time. That's exactly the argument I always get at <laughs> night. You go in at night. What are you doing walking around at night? Well, you see, you're getting up at night to go go into the bathroom and get aspirin for the headache that's lasted 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're there, you might as well take care of other business as well. Yeah. <laughs> all right, what do you want, Kim? Well, <laughs> Kim, may we call you Kim? Yes, of course. Or do you prefer Kimberly? Oh, either one is okay. Yeah, okay, right. good. The problem that I've got is something that's been going on for a while now. And um, I do a lot of driving between Bethany, West Virginia, and Louisville, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I can be driving down the road, and I'll stop, come back to my car, and it won't start. So I open up the hood. Well, there we go. And it's a, oh, it's a 1991 Subaru Loyal. So I open up the hood. Uh, The spare tire is in the front. So I unscrew the spare tire, haul the spare tire out, use the screw from the spare tire, reach in, bang on the starter really, really hard, and then start the car up. (laughs) And it works. Ah. Oh, so you turn the key and you get a, a click or something, but that's all you get. Yeah. How did you discover this technique? Well, I discovered it when I was um, on another long, I was on a ro- road trip again between Louisville and And, and you Bethany. just whacked everything under there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one that worked. And well, no, then the car died and we had the car towed to a mechanic and he reached in and banged on the starter and I figured, well, ah, okay. if he was able to do it, why can't I? Yeah. And he didn't suggest replacing the starter at that point because no, that's what you need. No, no. We we actually replaced the starter not too long ago, but it, we, we replaced it with a rebuilt starter. Yeah. And, and often we've discovered that a lot of the rebuilts out there have the same problem that the original ones had, especially for these kinds of starters, which are called gear reduction starters. Gear reduction starters. Gear reduction. Subaru uses it. Uh, uh, AMC uses it. <laughs> they still use it. And, you know, uh, uh, Toyota has been using it for years. But for whatever reason, these starters are subject to these kinds of failures where the starter, in fact, won't engage because the brushes 
aren't making uh, proper contact with the armature. And all you're going to do is tap the thing, and then you make a good contact. It's 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 akin to uh, hitting your refrigerator when it won't run. You know, the refrigerator won't kick in. Or the TV. I mean, it's or a the classic TV. You, give it, you give it a belt, <laughs> and boom, the, the thing kicks into action. And then, of course, once the car is running, you don't need it again until you shut it off. So there are lots of remedies here. One is to replace the starter with a better rebuild. I've, I've got it. I got it too. Okay. I, I never thought of this solution before. For, Here's go to the hardware you, store. Go to the hardware store. Spend the dollar ninety nine. And and you're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do. Have another key made. No. Oh no. I'm gonna buy a mouse trap. <laughs> and I'm gonna <laughs> duct tape it to the starter. <laughs> and I'm gonna have, run a little wire through the firewall. When the car doesn't start, I trip the mouse trap. <laughs> boom. You been talking to Fred Glass lately? <laughs> We have a friend who who, who is uh, renowned for his uh, inventions like this, or his and solutions. His, his inventiveness, <laughs> yeah, in general. So that's that's what you would do, the mouse trap. That's what Fred okay. would do. It's okay by me. <laughs> so I'll take it to the mechanic or the dealer and say, "Hey, put a mouse trap in my put a, starter." Put a mouse trap or a new starter, <laughs> and I I would uh, I would uh, buy a second key. Okay. So when you pull in to have lunch, oh, oh I see. You just leave the thing running. <laughs> <laughs> But a, a starter is what you need, Kim. Okay, yeah. a starter. Good luck. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks Bye-bye. for your call. one eight 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 car talk That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Anthony. I'm from Plainfield, Connecticut. How Hi, you Anthony. doing, Anthony? I'm doing just fine. I love your show. I love your show. That's too bad. Hey, how do you pronounce your name? Migliozzi or Migliozzi? Migliozzi. Migliozzi. Okay. A lot of people don't do the GLI. No. Hey, look. Here's what my problem is. Well, I've you, got a, you um, saw, why, do you have an Italian sort of last name? My name is Guglielmi. Guglielmi means Williams. Yeah. yeah. Williams. Anthony Williams. That's me. Anthony Williams. Hey, by the way, see if you can tell me what I'm studying in school. What am I going to school for? I see in your future... I see engineering of some kind. No, I see waste management. <laughs> I'm doing that, but I'm going to school for fine arts. I'm fine also arts, a fine huh? Arts student. Fine arts. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, it means uh, you know I beat copper into into plowshares. <laughs> 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 what is a plowshare anyway? <laughs> well, a couple ones anyhow. But here's, here's my story. I've got a a '94 uh, a LeBaron, you know, and it's got all the belts and whistles, the computer, the compass, and the leather seats and everything. Uh, yeah, Does but it's it... got more road noise that you can't believe. Right <laughs> now, my wife has got a '92 Acclaim, basically the same car with a four cylinder, and she get tires. I buy them at like Benny's when they're on sale, you know? <laughs> you can drive this car 70 miles an hour and have an intelligent discussion. Yeah. So I'm it's saying it's got, to, it's got to be my tires, right? Yeah. Like I'm driving down, if I'm driving down a hill and I put the car in neutral, I still hear the road noise. But at, Good. at a stop sign, I don't hear a thing. The car is, you know, real quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So I'm saying I got three options. One... I can put the tires on my wife's car and tell her I'm giving her the good tires. <laughs> and take her cheap tires for my car. Right? A man after my own. <laughs> That's one option. Number two is I can, you know, tell the insurance company somebody stole my tires. I'm still going to Penny to buy Okay, tires. so far we got two really good options. Right. <laughs> or the third one, and this is probably the best one, really. I want to, you know, in the old days you couldn't swap your radials, but I want to take like the left front and put it on the right rear. Sure. What kind of tire? What, what are these tires? They're good years. Well, well, I'm going to suggest that something else is wrong with your car. Could it be a wheel bearing? There you go. That's what I wrote. I wrote down. Do you, you think so? Get out of there. Well, what other uh, symptoms would a wheel bearing do? Well, the wheel bearing, the symptom is that the noise stops when you ain't moving. Yeah. <laughs> which you got. Sometimes it'll stop if you're taking a, a turn. Sometimes. Or oh, you can alter it. If you, Does if it you... go like wah-wah when you're making a turn? Well, yes, it can. And sometimes if you're going straight ahead and you hear the noise and you turn left or right, you can get the noise to change in, in you know, in volume. I can do that. Yeah, you, you can do that. Yeah. And it's not your tires. I think it's you have a bad tires. wheel bearing. And you... you don't think I should put them on my wife's car? Right? <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> well, I, I like the insurance. Yeah. Tell me more about the insurance company. <laughs> 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 so you are you are in some kind of an artisanry program at your uh, community college? What do you, where are you? No, I um I retired. Oh, you're retired. I'm 66 years old. 
Get out. You sounded yeah. like you were 26. Oh, thank you. I feel that way, too. I counted you for 26. I do a half hour exercise every morning. But <laughs> I, uh, uh, no, I retired, and then I uh, started doing uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So yeah. you're beating swords into plowshares now. Well, yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm making a copper weather vane, yeah. like three feet high, the motif. Yeah. The whole thing is going to be like nine feet high. Jeez, so really? That's, uh, that's one of my projects. Is this what my brother has to look forward to when he retires? I was just thinking of you. Yeah. Because he's, you sound like my brother. My brother, get this, my brother has started a new business. He's making birdhouses. Really? Yeah. He makes birdhouses out of stones. Out of stones? Out of stones. You know, like that rustic look? Yeah, yeah. Well, little stones, you know. Little stones. Oh, yeah, I Pebbles. see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You're There's only one off. problem. He's made now about five of these little things, and the birds won't go near it. The rent's too high. We're going to make them out of copper. Try I do. I'm out of copper. That's what made me think of it. He's got a copper roof on these things. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, they're works of art. <laughs> they are. I have to well, admit, they're quite lovely. Maybe he should go to school, too. Yeah, try I to did. They... university near you, try a nice fine arts. Well, story. I'm going to send him down to you. Get him out of here. Anthony, we, I tell you, we, we're ready for some collaborative effort here, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you get this wheel bearing thing figured out, take a ride up to Boston. Yeah, and take we'll, it to your mechanic, and he will figure out which wheel bearing is gone. Let me tell you, this car, best car I ever had. I was never a Chrysler man until I read Iacocca's first book, yeah. and, I, and I bought an 85 Chrysler. You did? Oh, it that was the Smoke and Mirrors book? What was that? <laughs> it started out $9,000. When I finished, it was 15000 I said, boy, can this guy sell cars? <laughs> then I read the second book. Yeah. I bought another Chrysler. I really? hope you don't write any more books. I can't buy another car right now. <laughs> <laughs> i got to take it easy. <laughs> hey, Anthony, thanks for calling. Hey, I appreciate your help. It's a pleasure. Your pleasure. <laughs> Keep up with Keep see, it up. See, see you later. You later. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> no, he was, you'd want to have coffee with him. Oh, I like Anthony. one 888 car talk or one 888 Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Judy from Ludlow, Massachusetts. Ludlow. Yeah. That would be like in Western Massachusetts, and I think there's a paper company there. No, no. that's Irving. <laughs> it is, it, Irving's on route out on Route Two. Ludlow is like the Mass Pike. Exactly, exit seven. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, my problem is a turnpike problem. Huh. Cool. Uh, I have an '84 Lincoln Town Car. Mm-hmm. And it has 125,000 miles on it, yeah. and I love this car to death. I mean, I just love it. It's just, it's wonderful. Around town, I have no problems. I get on the Mass Turnpike heading for Pittsfield, and just the other side of Westfield, there is an incline, and it goes up for about six miles. Mm -hmm. You know, not straight up, but it's, and uh, when I get halfway up there, my car starts acting up. It starts kicking and bucking and stammering, and, you know, I think I'm going to, uh, I think it's going to stall. Uh-huh. But that's the only place it happens. And it loses power, obviously, during all of this. Right, right. And I've taken it down to my friendly mechanic, who happens to be my brother-in-law also. Mm. Does and, it work for free? Uh, no. no. On your car? Okay. No. Just checking. <laughs> and they can't find anything wrong with it. They can't. What, what, well, have they, what have they done? Have they done the obvious stuff? Yes. Like yeah. what? You know, they put on the analyzer, and they've checked everything out. And Ah, they think it's an analyzing problem. Well, no, they don't think it is, because they can't find anything wrong know. with it. Well, I mean... I, I hate to mention the obvious, but it, something as, as uh, silly uh, yep. or as insignificant as a dirty fuel filter could cause this problem or a weak fuel pump. Yeah, I mean, They put it on the analyzer. Did they actually check the fuel pump pressure? No. Probably, I don't think Probably so. Probably not. I don't think See, so. See, another problem with putting it on the analyzer is it, it's analyzing under different circumstances than when the problem occurs. Because obviously you don't have the problem when you're going on a straightaway. Uh-huh. Yeah, but if you had something overheating... It wouldn't show up on the analyzer. Yeah, but would it? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think anything's overheating. Well, I mean, you know, that occurs to me that when you're driving up the hill, the car is requiring more energy to get it propelled up the hill. Uh-huh. And wait a minute! Produces... Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are about to hear an unencumbered by the thought process answer. <laughs> That's right. No, I haven't got an answer. I'm just, I'm just speculating here that just one of the things alert, that happens Judy. when you're climbing a hill is the engine gets hotter no it may not be getting hot enough for any of the lights to come on okay but i'm just wondering to myself out loud if something's happening and i don't know what that something could be tell you the truth 
When, when this happens, you, do you actually feel a just a degradation in power, or do you actually feel a missing? Do you actually feel like the engine is... She said is, she's afraid it's going to stall. It's running yeah, it's, so lousy. Yeah, yeah, It feels like it's, you know, it really is... Uh, Does it I mean, buck at all? It's, it's actually bucking. The car is actually well, bucking. Yeah. You know, it's not it, just a little bit. It's it's doing it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that could certainly cause this problem is is a, uh, a bad ignition module, and they probably have tested the ignition system. But I some think th- I've changed every module in this car. Well, <laughs> you, I mean, I'm I sure, paid through the nose on all these modules. I'm, I'm sure. Think. I'm sure you have. Uh, your, your brother-in-law buy a boat yet? I'm sure you've. <laughs> I'm sure you've changed the module at least once in this car, but it, you may have a bad one. But I would start with the fuel pressure test, and certainly take the fuel filter out and change that. Okay. If the other, if the fuel system stuff works out, okay, not to be, if it turns out not to be uh, uh, the culprit, then okay. I would go ahead and replace the module. Oh, good. I think that's going to fix it. See, my guess would be my first choice would be for fuel, for okay. fuel system problem. That's wonderful. Barring that, however, I'm going <laughs> to go out on a limb here and go back to my heat theory, okay, and suggest <laughs> that what's happening is when the engine heats up that much, the coil is failing. The coil. Uh, coil. Okay. I'm writing this all down here. Write that down. I and do. when that's right, please call back and tell my brother. Okay. That my God, that moron of your brother was right. <laughs> okay. I'll do all right. That. Once every ten See, years. Because I, I have, I have feelings about this. I admit it is not has nothing to do with the thought process, but I have, I have a feeling about this car. In fact, I'm going to tell you what color. I'm going to tell you just to prove to you that I have a feeling about this car. Is silver. How about black? Try black. Well, yeah, well, underneath the black. <laughs> silver primer. <laughs> you didn't know they repainted this car, did you? This no, car's I been did. an accident. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Judy. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Hey, it's time for us to take a little break. Yeah, this is when Berman comes rushing into the studio with those reams of timely automotive research the stuff that he's pulled off the web. No, this is where he looks up from the homepage of Cheerleaders of the Pac-10 and says, <laughs> what, uh, are we on the air? <laughs> well, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Road so slick I couldn't steer, snow too thick to see. Running short on shoulder and my nine lives running out on me. Sheer cliff rising to the left, drop off to the right. And nothing past that guardrail but a thousand feet in endless night. I sing Bulldog Train, she my ball and chain. Racing, rocking, tie rope walking, little eyes of Jane. And even though companies that make sound-deadening acoustic tiles see their stock prices shoot up whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor BetterHelp, a truly affordable online counseling service. Fill out a questionnaire online and get matched with a licensed counselor best suited to your mental health needs. Whether it's depression, anxiety, or trauma, BetterHelp will help you overcome what stands in the way of your happiness. Learn more at BetterHelp.com and get 10% off your first month with promo code CARTALK. BetterHelp. Get help anytime, anywhere. Support for this podcast and the following message come from the American Jewish World Service, working together for more than 30 years to build a more just and equitable world. Learn more at AJWS.org. Hey, y'all. I'm Sam Sanders, host of It's Been a Minute. On my show, we catch you up on all the things in news and culture. The Space Force? I totally missed this. What is the Space Force? Stop it. Stacey, you don't know about the Space Force? No! What? I've been in my apartment for four months. (laughs) Oh, man. Crushing it, Stacey. (laughs) Thank you. Feeling good. News without the despair. Listen now to the It's Been a Minute podcast from NPR. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and uh, woids, as they say in Brooklyn, <laughs> woids to live by. <laughs> and I don't know if he's from Brooklyn, but John Tegler sent this to us. These are simply little models, words to live by. Yeah, inspirational little Inspir- messages. Inspirational little messages. Here's one. Plan to be spontaneous tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you believe in telekinesis? Raise my hand. (laughs) I'd kill for a Nobel Peace Prize. (laughs) This is what Catherine will like this. Don't be sexist. Broads hate that. (laughs) And how about eagles may soar, but weasels don't get sucked up into jet engines. (laughs) If... (laughs) 
<laughs> this is for mayor. If at first you don't succeed, then skydiving is definitely not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. words to live words by. Words to live by. <laughs> <laughs> Skydiving is definitely not for you. Yeah, because you don't get second no, tries you and don't. Then you screw up, huh? <laughs> Pull. What do I do? <laughs> anyway, if you would like to call about your car or, or anything else for that matter, the number is eight 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 two two seven eight two five five, which just happens to be eight eight eight. You ready for this? Car talk. <laughs> Hello, you're on car talk. <laughs> what are the chances of that? <laughs> Hello. Hi, this is Kelly calling from Phoenix. Hi, Kelly. Do you have an E or a couple of E's? <laughs> it's just a Y. Okay. I have a 1979 Mercedes 350 SD turbo diesel. And in the past few months, she's been leaking liquid from above the gas pedal. Um, I notice it doesn't happen on the highway, but only when I'm going up or down a little dipper valley. And is it like a slippery liquid? Yeah, it's a little oily. And I've smelled it and tasted it. Oh. Yeah. Um, and it it doesn't have a smell, and uh, it tastes like water. You know, it doesn't really have a taste. Oh. Jeez. Well, it's, it can only be one of two things. And I if think it I... walks like a duck and <laughs> talks like a duck, it must be transmission fluid. <laughs> no, it, no, it can't be. No, it's, it's water. No, I don't think so. Hmm. Only because you said it was oily and... Yeah, My brother it's missed that because I, I missed that. I, he I, missed that because he he was dozing. <laughs> no, I was busy running my mouth. <laughs> busy running your mouth. <laughs> but so it's it's oily. It can only be antifreeze or brake fluid. Uh oh. And I think it's brake fluid. Uh oh. I think the antifreeze would have a, a distinctive taste. It would taste sweet. Hmm. <clears throat> and by the way, it's a deadly poison. But that's <laughs> yeah. So don't uh -oh. do the test too often. <laughs> Okay. Well, brake fluid doesn't have much of a taste, although... Uh, uh, I've never really had a good shot of it myself. Oh, I, I've had... You haven't? <laughs> Is it like some? I never made you one of those brake fluid high colonics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, I don't... See, this car has, has power brakes, and, and all the lines are, are on the other side of the firewall. I, I know. That's why I'm, I'm having trouble. I don't trouble. see any way that brake fluid could get into the passenger oh, yeah. compartment. I don't either. Yeah, that yeah. would. I mean, in terms of what it really ought to be, it ought to be antifreeze. Okay. Because the antifreeze is there, it's got a chance to get the drop on your dip on your feet. Maybe. Here's what you should do: mm -hmm. you should uh, feel antifreeze. You know, take the radiator cap off and stick your finger in there and rub the stuff between your fingers. And you okay. can do the same thing also with your with your brake fluid, although I doubt that that's what it is, and see if, which one most closely compares to your sample. Okay, and there's nothing I need to do about it, though. Oh, yeah, there is. Uh-oh, okay. Because it's leaking. Mm. The car is old enough that who knows what the cooling system looks like. It might be yeah. all rotted away. Yeah. In you, which case, it's probably going to cost you three or $4,000 oh, to fix it. Oh, don't tell me that. No, no, no. Check your brake fluid, make sure it's not low. Okay. Check the antifreeze, make okay. sure it's not low. Okay. And then you should tell someone, you, you're you pretty sure you got a, an antifreeze leak under the dash. Okay. Great. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right, Thank Kelly. Thank you. See Bye. one car talk That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hey. 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 How's it going? Hey. 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 Good. Hey. Who's this? <laughs> This is uh, Leaf from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania. Leaf like an Erickson? Yeah, except for my last name's Gustafson. Oh, Chester Springs. Are, are, are you an Amish person? <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I married you calling a on your cell phone? But, <laughs> and I teach at a Quaker school, so I guess I'm kind of in the ballpark. Oh, that's close. <laughs> what do you teach, Leaf? Language arts, 7th and 8th grade language arts. Language it, it, how, you arts. Dif is that differentiated from language by the fact that you don't actually teach a language? You just teach the art of language. Well, the the theory being that you know there are um, various skills in um, in I guess in the the traditional subject of English. You know, the listening, the speaking, the reading. The you know, so uh -huh. if, you, if you incorporate all that into an art, you know, then you can cover all the bases rather than just uh, focusing on. 
um, the vocabulary and, and rather, rather than focus on actually learning anything. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's yeah, I, that was the. I thought if I couched it in enough terms, you guys that was the thrust yeah. of my question actually, yeah. and I, I guess uh-huh. that you answered it. I've had some experience with schools like that. Yeah. Where they're more interested in all the touchy feely, abstract stuff than actually teaching anything. <laughs> That's okay. Right, like right. mathematics, am I, arts. Yeah. Am I supposed to be insulted here? Or? No, 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 no. Oh, just... you could take it that way. <laughs> are, you, are you putting down the fact that I'm a huge warm fuzzy? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Not so, at all. What's, on, what's on your mind today, Leaf? Well, um, I, I really need some advice. I mean, there's a small problem, but there, I, I need some advice. I have a ritual that I have formed through the years with my civic hatchback. And what I do is I thoroughly clean the car inside and out before I take it in for service. Ah. Now, the, you know, my thinking is yeah. that if I thoroughly clean the car, yeah. when I take it in for service, they're going you know, to look at the car and think, wow, this mm-hmm. guy really cares about this thing. Yep. We'll pay extra special attention. Yeah. You know? Well, I just took the car in for the 90,000-mile tune-up. Uh-huh. And I'm looking, at the, I'm looking at what they did and the price of everything, and I just don't think my ritual's working. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually thinking of trash, trashing the ritual. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking, you know, I didn't just vacuum over the mats. You, you armor rolled and everything. I would take the mats out. You yeah. did. Wait, yeah. wait, why, so are you, why are you saying that the ritual isn't working? <laughs> because they charge the heck out of you? Okay, well, no, see, I, think, I the... think this might be where, well, they, they, do char- they did charge the heck out of me. But here's where the small problem might come in. Yeah. Whenever I um, come to a stop, um, this is from probably, um, I might have had the car for about a year, um, and then this started to happen. Um, it, sometimes it almost stalls. In fact, it comes to the point where the, the engine light um, illuminates slightly, yeah. and, then it, and then it kicks back into idle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking, oh, wow, you know, well, this ritual is going to take care of the problem because they're going to during, you know, regular tune-ups and everything. They're oh. going to, of course, find this because I take such good care of my car. Oh. And they will fix it. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> well, it's still happening. Yeah. Oh, well, I see. So I that's see. why you think it backfired. Just, just to address the, <clears throat> your primary concern, I think that people whose cars are all cleaned up and shiny and look like they've been taken care of by the owner right. are treated better by the technician who works on the car. So really? And, and, yeah. and contrary to what you might think, the bill is not going to be lower. It's going to be higher because he's going to pay special attention and spend extra time in the car knowing that you are someone who wants his car taken care of. Right. Right. You're an you anal take... retentive, and he's going to he's going to make sure that it's you a... are pleased. He, so he... it is an automatic catch-22. It's an automatic it's catch-22 sort of in that, but on the other side of the coin, you are getting what you hope, and I would expect to be better service and better care for your car, but you're paying extra for it. Okay. Yeah, but see, the, the other problem, the other mistake you're making, or okay. a mistake that you're making, is expecting the mechanic to find things without your explaining them to him. Of course. Yeah, I have... mean, that's a very, very big mistake. We can't even find the problems <laughs> when they do explain the stuff to us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't expect the guy to notice this peculiar little problem. First of all, if he even notices it, he doesn't know that it happens to you day after day. He says, ah, it happened once, who cares, forget about it. You've mm-hmm. got to be very, very explicit. We are not dealing with intuitive people here. Well, yeah, we are I not mean, dealing with people who can make great leaps of logic. We're dealing with people to whom you must be very, very explicit and clear. Well, and, and to defend technicians, because I am one. You say thicknitions? Well, that, yeah. <laughs> not thicknitions. <laughs> You don't fix nothing that the customer didn't complain about. Yeah, exactly. Because you get yourself in trouble doing right. that. So if it isn't on the repair order, forget it. You don't. You know, you might call it to the customer's attention, but you don't. You just don't go ahead and fix it because the customer has a right to complain. You say, "Well, I noticed your rear view mirror had fallen off, and I glued it back on." Ah, I didn't want you to do that. I was going to do that on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Are so, you married, Leaf? Uh, yes, I am. Well, I, I suggest to you, having had much experience in marital disputes, I suggest to you that you don't use this same philosophy with your wife. <laughs> she ought to be noticing this. She ought to know that she blah, 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 whatever it is. She ain't going to notice it. Not because she's stupid, but you've got to learn to communicate better. 
Wow. You're going to well, open up, man. You, you, need, you know what you up? need? A language arts <laughs> course. <laughs> You don't. You're not using the language correctly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, well, for a guy who teaches language arts, you've been quite laconic about all of this. Well, actually, now you would have only learned that word had you actually been in a language arts class. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to you have to mend your ways before it's too late, Leaf. <laughs> you have to turn over a new leaf. <laughs> I was waiting for you guys to do that, yeah. but you know, if I didn't have this small problem, then I would have never been able to talk to you. Well, we're so, so we're glad for you that yeah. you called because I think yeah, we've straightened you out, it's man. It's going to change your life, man. Yeah, and it didn't cost me a thing. Yeah. Well, well, maybe it did. Maybe it did. <laughs> Looking down at that last bill, but <laughs> what I like best, though, is the way you came on to the show by saying. Hey, <laughs> that that made my day. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Good see, luck. See you, Lee. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. bye one 888 talk or one 888 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hey there. Hi. Hey there. You at the start. Who's this? Right. Hey, this is Vicky from Louisville, Colorado. Vicky. You know, I, oh. I, I'm, gonna, I'm taking offense here at how familiar... Our listeners are becoming with us. This, Vicky says, hey there. The other guy says, hey, yo. <laughs> well, you know why? Because it's it's probably becoming apparent, although it wasn't in the beginning, the first 10 yeah, or 12 no years class. That, did the show, that we're a couple of jamokes. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> All right, Vicky. Enough of that. All right. What's on your mind? My mind is my Volvo. Uh-huh. It's a 240 wagon, 80, 82,000 miles, time to die. Oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Hardly oh. broken in. <laughs> really? Seriously. It's not well, even halfway to time to die. Well, that's my hope. That's my hope. But I've had my first problems with it this summer, so... Oh, you'll have plenty of problems, but that doesn't mean it's oh. going to die. <laughs> you ever notice that Volvo dealerships have the best waiting rooms, the nicest furniture? Because I know you're going to be there a long time. I know you're going to be there often. <laughs> yeah, the only place that has the American plan. <laughs> you can sleep over and have breakfast. <laughs> I avoid the dealerships if at all possible. <laughs> oh, okay. So what's, what's, what's the problem? Well, the problem is the car started overheating on me. Mm -hmm. The first time I had the problem was when we had this big power outage, and I got stuck in a lot of big traffic jams, and it was a really hot day, and I had the AC on full blast because the car is dark blue and had been sitting out in the sun, and it was hot. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, well, that was just a fluke, you know, mm -hmm. because we're, I was stuck in awful traffic. That's what I thought the first six times it happened to my car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but then a couple weeks later, I was going over Monarch Pass here, which is a pretty tough pass, pulling a little pop-up tent trailer, which I pull with my car. Uh -huh. And I had trouble again, and that whole trip I had trouble. And so I stopped in Durango, and I had them put a new thermostat in. Good. And as soon as I pulled out of there, it did the exact same thing. I mean, I wasn't Bad. five minutes down the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had since also had a water pump put in. Good. But it wasn't that either. It, it yeah. wasn't that either. Yeah, <laughs> what made these Durangans put a thermostat in there? Did, did they check anything else? Well, no. I kind of asked them to. I, I was going to get a thermostat, and I was going to put it in myself. Actually, oh, in the Vicky, Vicky, uh -oh. Vicky. No, actually, <laughs> actually, the thermostat was a very good guess. Well, now that now that they sure now that because the thermostat was not opening up enough to cause to well, allow that, sufficient circulation. Under high speed, high load operation. That was kind of my hope. And and I'm going to have to now that I know that that didn't fix it, and the water pump didn't fix it. I'm going to give you the right answer because it's almost the only thing left. Now, should I also tell you that this problem usually happens after I've gone the car up to temperature and I stop it for like ten minutes, and then I start again, like I stop and get gas or something, and Irrelevant. then start driving again. Irrelevant. 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 Immaterial. Okay. And, uh, okay. Immature. And Sorry. In inconsistent. <laughs> I didn't mean and unconscious. <laughs> It's the radiator. Oh, the radiator. The radiator's well, plugged up. When, when the water pump got replaced, they looked at the radiator and said it looked fine. Well, well look, sure it looks fine. You could, for example, I look fine. You can look at my brother and say, doesn't look bad. <laughs> but it's what's does, inside that counts. That's what's going on inside. And when Everything's you look at him, you know there's nothing going on inside. Well, supposedly somebody looked inside. But... Looking inside is not good enough. No. You have to have someone take out the radiator, as mine is being taken out as we speak, I might add, <laughs> and check the flow to see how much okay. stuff is going through it. Okay. And I'm going to guess it. I was going to guess the same thing. You probably have never had it flushed. Well, that guess is correct. Yeah, that guess sure. is correct. And now it's all crudded up. And if you're lucky, they can clean it out with an acid bath. If you're not lucky, you'll have to replace it for three or four hundred bucks. Or oh, whatever. don't tell me that. No, but it's, it's good that you called, actually, because I'm sure there are... Dozens of people listening to the show as we speak, maybe four or five people, 
who said to themselves just now, gee, I didn't know you had to flush out the coolant No, system. after all, the container, well, the yeah. antifreeze container says permanent antifreeze. Yeah, it means you can put it in there and leave it in permanently. How often should it, should it be flushed? It should be done every couple of years, but it, at the very least every three years. Oh, but okay. you're going to do it tomorrow. But it, but it, may, oh. be, it may be so plugged now. That in fact you cannot get it get it cleaned out, and if you, if that's the case, you'll have to replace the radiator. But I I guarantee you, when they do that flow test, they will determine that the radiator is plugged up. Okay, and if not, I can send you the bill, right? Of course, oh, of course, yeah. send us the bill. You think yeah, get in line, lady? You think it'll be the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Just one of many, huh? See you, see you, Vicky. Good luck. Thank you very much, guys. Bye bye. Okay, Tommy, it's time for a few words from our local stations. And what might those words be? How about mid-season replacement? How's that sound? <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. We're going to be right back, maybe. I'm going for Miami. You know, it's just a three-day ride, and it's 70 degrees outside in the shade. And even though medical researchers everywhere list nausea, vertigo, and a desire to get one's pledge back as common car talk side effects, <laughs> whenever we say it, this is NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Kay Buxbaum in support of the David Gilkey and Zabiula Tamana Memorial Fund, established to strengthen NPR's commitment to training and protecting journalists in high-risk environments. With civil unrest, the pandemic, and the economic crisis, you want to know what's happening right when you wake up. And that's why there is Up First, the news you need in about 10 minutes from NPR News. Listen every day. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and yet another great theory. Uh, this is from Joel Newman. One morning I was driving my brand new Honda Civic down the interstate en route to Charlotte, the, the Charlotte Auto Fair, listening to Weekend Edition on public radio. Weekend Edition ended and your show came on. Since I was not yet thoroughly familiar with my new car, I was reluctant to fiddle with the dashboard knobs while driving at highway speeds. Thus, I did not change the station. During your show, a woman called to say that she had dented her car and then allowed her husband to believe that someone else had done it. I remember it well. Remember that? She asked Volkswagen. If, bus. Yeah? Vanagon. Vanagon, yeah. She asked if she should confess to her husband. You said no. Later in the conversation, it came out that her husband was a car talk listener and she planned a ruse to prevent him from hearing her conversation with you. With that additional information, you changed your answer and told her to confess. Yes. I remember that too. When you think you're going to be caught, <laughs> confess. <laughs> I assume for the purpose of the discussion that follows that you were correct on both counts. That the answer to her question in the abstract was no. But the answer to the very same question when asked out loud was yes. Uh -huh. I think that you have stumbled upon an important new principle. Why, why stumble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are probably familiar with Heisinger's uncertainty principle. Uh, Heisinger's. No, who's Heisinger's. <laughs> who's the guy, that owns, the, guy, the guy that owns a blockbuster? Heisinger. <laughs> the Heisinger. The Heising Werner Heisenberg. He says Heisinger. Heisinger's good. <laughs> right. Maybe maybe that's another one. It is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that certain aspects of some atomic particles cannot be measured accurately. For the very process of measurement changes the particles. There you go. I believe that you have discovered a related principle. In Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the very act of measurement changes the measurement. In the phenomenon which you so eloquently elegantly demonstrated on the radio, the very act of asking a question out loud changes the answer to the question. Uh. I propose that you call your principle the Magliozzi Ignoramus Principle. <laughs> Snobs who enjoy dropping terms like that will be attracted by the Italianate Magliozzi followed by the Latinate Ignoramus. I predict that this new principle will have many valuable applications, particularly in the field of politics. I congratulate you on your addition to the <laughs> store of human knowledge, Joel Newman, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. <laughs> 
The uh, very act of asking a question out loud changes the answer to the oh, question. Absolutely. We <whistles> we've been mipped. <laughs> mipped. <laughs> mipped. My Yahtzee ignoramus. <laughs> well, think about it, man. Hey, some of you may be wondering. Uh, hey, with... here. What's that? There's the phone number in Roman numerals. <laughs> VIV. It... I, v... it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some of you may be wondering where the puzzler is. Hey, I was wondering where the puzzler is. Get off my back, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you need to shock your brain cells out of their summer torpor, or if you're just bored, then you can head on over to cartalk.com and check out this week's archival puzzler. Hmm. Archival? Does that mean it was so great that we saved it? Archived for future generations? No, it just means we got less than the usual number of complaints about it. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, if you have a complaint about your car or anything else, you can reach us at the following number. I V I I V I I V I I I I I I V I I V I I I I I V V. That's one eight 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 Car Talk. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello, this is Dora. I'm calling from West Monroe, Louisiana. Hi, Dora. Westman West Monroe. Monroe. Oh, West Monroe. Yes. Louisiana. That's correct. So, so what's up? Okay. I have a 1986 Dodge Ram van. Yeah. And it's a hungry van. It has an appetite for alternators. I oh. am on my fourth alternator in about a six week period. <laughs> six <laughs> weeks? <laughs> oh. In about six weeks. No okay. kidding. No kidding. The first time it happened, I'd never had any trouble with it. I'm driving home, and the digital display on the clock starts flickering, and the radio started cutting out, and this happened more when I was slowing down at the intersections. Mm -hmm. And I made it home, but then it wouldn't start after that. It kind of went brrrr. Yep, good, And good. so I thought, oh, it's the battery. It's, you know, whatever. So I jump-started it in the morning and drove it to my mechanic. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, it's the alternator. I'll, just, I'll replace it. How, when he said that, did mm -hmm. he... Did he do anything, or did he just say that? He said he had checked the battery and had checked the regulator and had checked the generator and whatever. So I picked it up. Yeah. The very next day, I had driven it less than 50 miles, and it did the same thing. Mm. So uh, he towed it back to the shop, and he said, oh, it, I must have just put in a bad alternator. So he replaced it. And so, <laughs> I mean, this so. is an interesting <laughs> behavior tactic here, that no matter how many times you go back... Mm -hmm. He puts another alternator in. <laughs> I mean, at some you, it gets, point. It gets better. No, he, he's a good man. He's a good mechanic. He's always taking good care of this van. He's stymied, right? So he says, I said, what are you going to do? He says, well, um, let me see. So I found he took it to his mechanic. Mm. My mechanic takes it to his mechanic. And good. his mechanic says, it needs a new alternator. So he puts another one in, Which number four. Because, I mean, the alternators are burning up for some reason. And uh, he said, well, you probably just got a hold of some bad alternators, and we're thinking three in a row. Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting... So you're, you're now on your fourth alternator, and it's currently working? It's uh, working now, but... But uh, she only put it in yesterday. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the joy of driving around wondering... Is no, it's not going to work for long. With. I mean, I don't think it's well, going to work for long. you know, it, it is possible, and we have had it happen. I, I Not with an alternator, but I remember some years ago buying four water pumps mm -hmm. brand new air fresheners no <laughs> four brand new carburetors I, I can't remember it was some ford product yeah. and we diagnosed the carburetor as bad uh -huh. we put a brand new one on and it the, the thing ran worse than with the old one. Oh my goodness so they sent us another one we put that one on and then, of course, you, at that point, when it misbehaved again, you begin to second guess, right? Uh -huh. yeah, thinking, yeah, I was, guess yeah. I was wrong. It I couldn't have been the I carburetor. I screwed it up. But I, I timidly asked the parts store to send us the third one, to which he replied, what are you, nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and and that one did the same thing. And it I, I must admit, it took great courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, so you admire this mechanic of hers well, he because... Perseveres. Yes. He is persevering, and he will not give up until he gets a good alternator, well, it may... and he will not veer well, from in, his In this case, with the diagnosis. carburetors, they had built all these with the wrong jets. Oh, my. And in fact, they were all defective, and I ended off getting a, the fourth one from another source. Yeah. Well, maybe It was from a different batch, and in fact, that fixed the car, and it ran beautifully. Wow. 
it was hmm. six months later that we got it out. Of, <laughs> but it's very possible that whatever they did wrong to the first one, if they're the same batch, they did wrong to all of them. Uh huh. Well, maybe maybe his mechanic got one from a different batch. But like I said, the suspense is killing me. Well, and, and us too. <laughs> And that's too, so I mean, aside from the obvious stuff like you know having put the belt on too tightly, which could damage the alternator, I rather doubt that he could have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, four times in a row. I am, I think this thing has an external voltage regulator, and he must have checked that. He told me he had checked everything. The other thing you should look for is to, is to make sure that the thing is grounded correctly. Sometimes there's a ground strap that goes between the the uh, the engine block and the chassis mm -hmm. that gets removed or falls off or whatever. And uh, that can affect the charging rate. So he should double-check to see if that ground is there. Okay. And other than that, tell him to order an alternator from someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. See if, that, if this doesn't fix it. All right. Because he's gotten them all from the same parts store, in all likelihood. And they may be just a batch of them. Maybe they've got a bad bunch well, of that, rectifier that's possible, bridges. possible, but uh, so it has been so disconcerting. It seems so unlikely, though. It does, but just remember... Despite my brother's the little example story. example of the carburetor... <laughs> At this point, I mean, I sprinkle it with holy water and say, in Our Father and three Hail Marys, and get in and crank it up and, <laughs> and hope for the that best. That was going to be my next suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck, Dora. This is very interesting. <laughs> well, thank you. I am so delighted to talk to you. And we're delighted to talk to you. You are my automotive icon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very much. Thanks, Dora. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs> one eight eight eight. Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello. Yeah. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Okay, I'm in San Diego. Who are you? Well, they call me Crash Corwin. Crash Corwin. <laughs> yes. <sir>. Crash. <laughs> now I wonder why. Oh, uh, I don't know if you want to hear the story. Oh, you kidding? Of course we, we do. Every <laughs> detail. <laughs> oh God. Well, make a long story short, I was in the Navy and I fell off one of those great big ships. You did? Yeah. Well, it wasn't so bad because I didn't land in the water. Uh, I landed on the pier. Oh, that's better? Well, it would have been worse, but I, the guy that I landed on that was on the pier softened the blow. <laughs> <laughs> how, how high up were you oh, when you high. fell off? It was, about, it was one of those rope ladders in Subic Bay, Philippines. It was kind of drizz, drizzling, rainy, and, and it was about 20 guys on the length of this whole ladder. Yeah. And I was being real show off because a couple of hundred guys down below watching, a couple of hundred guys up above waiting to get off because we didn't have a gangplank. And I started going over the guys showing off. Uh -huh. Something happens to me when everybody looks at me. I got to do something smart. And so it was working. It was working fine. And I was going over these guys, straightening out my elbows, kind of going around them. And then, well, I stepped on this guy's fingers, and then the whole line started kind of slowly twisting and kind of doing waves. And well. I just clawed my way down these guys' backs and landed on this guy's shoulders just as he was walking away. Oh, great. <laughs> and, of course, a fight broke out. <laughs> That's good, Crash. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I, I need to be proud of that. So has your life been been, been a, a one constant uh, calamity after another? Uh, no, it's been been pretty good, but, but the name has been good to, to carry me through the little music I play around town and stuff. and. The, Dance instructions. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so, you, what are you calling it's us pretty, for? Just pretty, to, pretty much uh, uh, eliminates the possibility of you being like a driving instructor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got fired from that job a long time ago. Yeah, he's our, he's our chief instructor, Crash Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, business didn't go well. I had to quit. So, what's going on? Well, I have this Mazda 626. Uh huh. Yeah. My girlfriend and I get sick when we drive this car. We really do. Really? It sways from left to right. It's just nauseating. Maybe you're making each other sick. <laughs> oh, so is this a slow sway? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a yaw, right. right? In other words, the car... You... It's, it's like being at sea again, back in the Navy. And, you're, you, know, it's, you know, some ships have a lift. They, yeah. they, they kind of, it's like being in an elevator, it kind of goes up, but then, it, but then at the peak it goes to the left and goes to the right. Mm-hmm. It's like the, the power steering is, is oversensitive. I turn it just a little bit, yeah. and then that's where this, that's where it starts. Yeah. And, you know, I put new shocks on the car. That mm -hmm. helped a lot. And I put new bushings on the tie rods or something to kind of help it from sway, sway bar, whatever. Sway bar bushings? Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Cool. Didn't mean, didn't mean to hit you to the punchline here, but I, you know. No, 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 that's okay. I, I, I have many tricks up my <laughs> sleeve. So this means since someone has actually looked at these and replaced them, 
I suspect that that means that that same someone has looked at the entire front end and knows that you don't have uh, idler arms that are falling off. You don't have an idler arm. Ball joints that are falling off. Ball joints you have. Tie tie rod rod ends ends that are falling off. You don't have any of that stuff. Well, you know, when I got the sharks done, I said, see anything else? He said, well, he said he didn't really look. So that's when I came back and I brought my own bushings. Because I just read about uh, uh, oh, 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 so that was a self-diagnostic procedure. Ah, he, so he didn't look at the other stuff. I didn't know if there was. What else could there be? You know, and I guess he didn't. Well, think I, I have to ask you one question. When it yeah. does drift to the left, yeah, and you cor- and you correct to the right, does it seem like it overcorrects very yes. easily? Yes. Now it's minimal. It's not as bad as it used to be, but that's the yes. That's the tendency. Uh, what I think is wrong with this is something that they may easily have overlooked or done wrong. Oh, great. Mm. And I think that your alignment is off, especially what's called the caster. Caster. Okay. Yeah, the, the caster uh, component of the alignment is what keeps the car going, among other things. In a straight line. In a straight line. Mm. And it also makes it correct to, to straight after you've made a turn. For example, if you're cast, you know how casters on a T-cart... The wheel will always follow behind when you turn, no matter what. It goes it goes in the direction you push it. Well, that's what that caster mm. uh, part of the alignment does. It makes sure that the that the car follows, so that when you make a turn, for example, and you let go of the wheel, the wheels straighten out. Yes. And if the caster is way off, it's very difficult to drive the car at high speed because it goes kind of where it wants to go. And if you had, for example, overinflated tires, mm. the car would be almost impossible to drive. Mm-hmm. So I'm I willing to bet that whoever did your, your struts yeah. it, did not then go ahead and align the thing. Oh, alignment. No, he, no, no, he did say he aligned it. He threw that in for free. For well, that. I think he aligned it wrong. Okay. Or it's your, either that or it's your girlfriend. Oh, it's my girlfriend's fault. Can I tell her she said it's her fault? <laughs> yeah, tell Ray. Tell her Ray <laughs> said that. <laughs> well, I just want this to stop. Well, good luck. And make sure you double-check okay. the tire inflation, too, because that All could right. do it as well. All right, Good luck, Crash. You may be living up to your name if you keep driving it like this. Okay. Watch out if you're in San Diego. Don't worry. We will. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the warning. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, it's happened again. You've squandered another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our steam producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, bongo boy, Frogman Berman. Our associate <laughs> producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Smyrna Smelt and Schmaltz spectacle, is John Bugsy Lawler. Yeah. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research. Richard and Howe and WBUR in Boston. And even though NPR's insurance agent doubles our slander premiums whenever <laughs> he hears us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Odoo. Odoo is a suite of user-friendly business applications designed to automate, streamline, and simplify 